Welcome to Bio 231, Cannabis History, Culture, Science, and Medicinal Uses. This is your team here. I'm Dale Deutsch, Professor of Biochemistry and Cell Biology. Dr. Joanne Souza is the Director of the Biology Online Program. And Michael Munez is the Instructional Support Specialist, and he has a Bachelor of Science in, bio in um, Biology. We're going to go through the different modules. I'm going to give a few slides in each just to give you an overview in this introduction of what the course consists of. The first module is history and pre-recorded history. This is someone's imaginary imagination of how marijuana would have hung around with hunters and gatherers at some point in time. And this is a book we're going to be using a reference book for the course that is available to you as a PDF. It's a book by Ernest Abel, who um, I communicated with recently, and he gave permission to use the book, The First 12,000 Years of Marijuana. And we're going to go through some of the historical, archaeological sites. These are remains they found of cannabis plants in a tomb. And they also found... 2,500 years ago or 5,000 years ago, they found um, a stash of cannabis, 1.7 pounds, and they could identify it by its trichomes and its seeds. Another module that we will move on to is the cannabinoid plant biology. We'll go through the life cycle from sprouting to harvesting, including the vegetative stages. We'll talk about the differences between the male and female plants. And also, we'll discuss the taxonomy. And this diagram shows both the scientific names of the plant here and the more um, common names that people use, sativa and indica, you may be familiar with. And ruderalis, ruderalis is the rope, indica and sativa is the dope. That will bring us to a module on chemistry. And here are shown the structures for THC, anandamide, cannabidiol, and turacanonoglycerol. This chap here, Rafi Mishulam, isolated and identified THC, anandamide, and 2AG during his career, and he was a great colleague to have to bring a chance for scientists to make great discoveries based upon his medicinal, original medicinal work of identifying, um, helping identify the ligands for the receptors. Also, we'll talk about at some point the conversion of um, and activation of the cannabinoids, and also become aware of all the, some of the structures, more than 110 cannabinoids in the marijuana plant, and here are just some of them shown. Likewise, we'll become familiar with how one analyzes the plant for clinical um, medicinal use and also essentially for rec recreational use. And here you can see where they analyze for CBD, also terpenes that occur in the plant, and they checked for mold, mildew, hair, heavy metals, to make sure the plant is not contaminated with anything. After that, we'll move on to the legal aspects of the area of the research. In from um, 1850 to 1936, cannabis was a common medicine in the United States, and companies like Lilly and Pfizer um, had products that they used for various conditions, including cough. And that came to an abrupt halt, the medicinal use of marijuana in the United States with the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. And we'll go over these, um, these um, political things that happened. And speaking about legal things, in 1968, the State University of New York at Stony Brook was invaded by Suffolk County Police. Dr. Shirley Kenny gave me these slides. 
and they arrested, I think, around 38 people and 165 police invaded the campus. And more recently, since then, many states have, have in, in, um, become involved in using medicinal marijuana, and, and, and some states have fully legalized recreational marijuana, and a few states have still prohibited marijuana. And we'll also talk about the situation in the United States, but around the world. And at that point, we will examine politics. And in New York State, Governor Cuomo is tried this year to make marijuana legal recreationally. It's legal medicinally right now. That didn't work out so well so far. And likewise, Governor Murphy of New Jersey tried to make recreational marijuana legal. They have medicinal there. Both Governor Murphy and Governor Cuomo put as part of their bill compensation for minority communities that were, which were um, unjustly, I guess you would say, um, picked on by the law, law enforcement, so many arrests, marijuana arrests in those areas for minor crimes. A lot of people ended up in jail, and they were going to use the money, the tax money for recreational to, to um, compensate those communities that were unfairly treated. There are many organizations that are pro-legalization, pro-cannabis, and there are just as many make, make, uh, organizations that are anti cannabis and we will discuss those and of course some of them most important ones after that we'll go to the next module which is sociology and this is a pretty good friend of mine martin lee he wrote a wonderful book called smoke signals and it's a social history of marijuana and medicinal recreational and scientific use and i use this for, especially for the sociological part of the course and most of you are, haven't been born at the time but in the 19 60s in California, um, 100,000 people descended upon San Francisco and the Haight-Ashbury region and hung out there. It was called the Summer of Love, and the people smoked, and it was a time of hippies. They dressed a little bit differently. And part of the sociology is that these people at that time actually had, um, had security and, and money that they can go and do this and take off. And part of the sociology of marijuana is involved with the music industry at that time, especially jazz musicians. And one of the most famous jazz musicians, his name is Louis, Louis, um, Louis Armstrong, he said, Mary Warner, you sure was good to me. Part of the course will be involved with the neurosciences. And in order to do that, we'll have to introduce that. We'll talk about the central nervous system. We'll talk about the peripheral nervous system. We have some great two-minute videos. And we'll also talk about the chemical synapse. We'll talk about the dendrites, the axons, the neurons, the receptors, and nervous conduction, the different type of neurons, sensory interneurons and motor neurons. Next module will bring us to the endocannabinoid system. And we'll talk about every aspect of the endocannabinoid system, starting with the endocannabinoids, anandamide and 2-AG. We'll talk about the cannabinoid receptors, here called CB1 receptors. We'll talk about the signaling of the receptors and how they affect the potassium and the calcium channels. We'll talk about the synthesis of the endocannabinoids. We'll talk about the breakdown of the endocannabinoids. We'll talk about the transport of the endocannabinoids. There have been um, knockout of knockout animals. We knocked out the enzymes involved in the synthesis, for instance, of, of uh, anandamide or we can knock out the enzyme that breaks it down, for instance. And when we do that, and the endomite levels go up, and the animals are, as you might guess, under the influence of high levels of anandamide, high levels of an endocannabinoid, which would affect them appropriately. And also, there are people who have 
some mutations in their enzymes, and they have also high levels of anandamide, and we'll talk about that phenotype of those people, and we'll talk about the phenotype of the animals that have these mutations. We'll also talk about endocannabinoids and their retrograde signaling, which is a very important aspect of them. They're one of the few, or maybe the only, neurotransmitters that go from the postsynaptic to the presynaptic neuron, and they sort of put the brakes on signaling the other way. Medical uses of marijuana is one of the major modules. And we'll talk about the history for medical use. We'll go back 5,000 years in China when they used cannabis for menstrual fatigue, gout, rheumatism, malaria, constipation, etc. And then we'll talk about current use, and we'll use this monograph called Information for Healthcare Professionals, put out by Canadian government. And this is a 200-page monograph with about 2,000 references. It's very encompassing. We'll, we, the endocannabinoid systems from there, the clinical pharmacology we'll do, dosing, potential therapeutic uses will be a big part. We'll continue with all those therapeutic uses. Then we'll talk about precautions, warnings, adverse effects, overdose and toxicity. And we'll learn something about randomized clinical trials versus observational studies. We'll have to know this so we can interpret the studies that have been done to see which ones are ones that you could accept and have confidence in. We'll talk about medical uses of cannabinoids for palliative care and hospice care for multiple sclerosis, multiple sclerosis, ALS, spinal cord injury. We'll take a break from medicinal and go back to the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. And we'll explain what those they are, these two. And we'll also talk about how they act upon, how the cannabinoids act upon the receptors in the body. And we'll talk about where the receptors are, the CB1 and the CB2 cannabinoid receptors, as well as well, the metabolism in the liver of the compounds. We'll talk about the phase one and phase two metabolism. And we'll also talk about specific cytochrome P450s. In this instance, this is a study that a graduate student in my laboratory did. He showed that the cytochrome P452C9 converts THC to 11-hydroxy THC, and the 11-hydroxy THC is actually as active, but not more active than the THC. Talk about the bioavailability of the cannabinoids by the different routes. For instance, oral, if you eat a cookie, only 6% is available, but if you smoke it, you can get up to 50 to 80 percent of this vaporized. Also, we'll talk about how CBD affects other enzymes and then how the effects, the cytochrome P50s, and effects that'll have upon other drugs. This is important because a lot of people are taking CBD now, and people may be taking other drugs as well. And we'll return back to the medicinal uses of marijuana towards the end. One of the most dramatic uses of it was for treating little children with special types of epilepsy and they couldn't be controlled with their drugs and CBD and the cannabinoids seem to be quite effective in certain situations and we'll also talk about it using for medicinal uses with um, older patients and how they ingest it this is an example of using a thing called the volcano and we'll talk about its role in arthritis and musculoskeletal disorders in terms of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis and gout and fibromyalgia. And we'll talk about what that condition is, Hunting's disease, Parkinson's disease, Tourette syndrome, and they're both positive and negative reports, but some very dramatic um, um, examples of how it helps people with, with um, some of the tics with Tourette syndrome. And uh, we'll talk about some other dystonia, uh, that is other movement disorders. Post-traumatic stress disorders, we'll talk about how cannabinoids may be used for helping ameliorate some of the symptoms that people have. And also in certain situations, it may actually um, it may cause problems. So, We'll talk about inflammatory skin disease, that is dermatitis, psoriasis, pruritus, and irritable bowel syndrome. And um, there have been some dramatic 
um, clinical um, successes. I have a friend in California who has a big practice treating people with various um, intestinal and colon diseases and um, has some success. Towards the end of the course, we'll be talking about the adverse effects. Um, vaping, you can have vaping for medicinal use, but also a lot of problems with vaping from um, the black market when there's substances that can cause serious problems and even some deaths and types of pneumonia. We'll talk about what it's like to have a bad trip. We have lots of videos during the course. And also we'll have a testimonial by um, users, particularly this chap who smoked marijuana for a long time and he became tolerant, dependent, and he talked about his withdrawal symptoms and how hard it was to stop. And there is a syndrome which will study called the Cannabis Use Disorder Syndrome. That is for people who are hooked on the drug. Also, occupational and other hazards in terms of the adverse effects. Drug screening tests. Um, how long the cannabis will remain in your urine if you have a drug screening test and what the levels are and what the cutoff values are. And we'll answer some questions. For instance, can CBD make you fail a drug test? Talk about traffic accidents and fatalities and the effects of can can um, cannabinoids on these. Also, we'll talk about the psychiatric effects and how can cannabinoids can cause anxiety, increase the, the um, symptoms of PTSD, depression, and bipolar disorder. We will next examine overdose and toxicity. And there's not too much to talk about this because actually people cannot overdose, as far as I understand, on CBD. And THC, they can overdose, but they will not have their heart or their breathing stopped, but they can have... Um, bad effects, of course, if they take too much THC. And as I mentioned, CBD toxicity. We'll talk about how much CBD people take, for instance, for epilepsy and how much it can cost. Talk about some of the economics of the cannabinoids. And lastly, we'll talk only a little bit about recreational. During the historical part and during the sociological part, we talked about recreational use. And we'll have a little bit at the end some people would describe what it's like to have a experience where it's a, a, the high is pleasant. Good day. I hope that you'll be able to enjoy this course. We'll enjoy teaching it and working with you.